Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to your intervention. <laughs> That's my old trick. I say it all. <laughs> you can steal it. I don't mind. Um, I'm very happy to be here tonight, and I'm going to bring out uh, an actress who I have an incredible amount of respect for. I worked with her on a show called The Act. She's one of the most talented and generous actors that anyone could ever hope to work for, Joey King. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh. I'm so, so happy that you're here. Thank uh, you so much for doing this and for saying that. It's so nice. Oh, you're such a love bug. And she's so talented. I mean. And all the things I did to you on the act, I owe you. I <laughs> your life. Um, anything you need. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and we're going to show you a little clip here. I, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch the whole series, but so much wonderful work, and Joey's so incredible in it. So, without further ado, here's our clip from We Were the Lucky Ones. I <laughs> this question about that, but okay, anyway. I'm blind, I'm old. I can't, I can't do it. Anyway, that was a really powerful scene. Thank you. How did you guys prepare for that? And I mean, it felt, you know, this is part of your strength as an actress. You really are so natural and believable. And um, I could tell you were really in the moment and he was really in the moment, and you guys were in that together. How was that to put yourself in that frame of mind that this is based on a real family and yeah. a real experience? How was that for you to be in that moment? Um, I would, you know, thank you for, for the, that question. I, I really love that question because I really love that scene. You know, that, that scene was, to me, one of the most difficult in the entire series for me. Um, because of how, um, of, because of how emotional it was, um, and, and what they're, what they're talking about is so, my God, I can't even imagine being in that situation where you're pleading with the love of your life to stay next to you so that you can hopefully survive whatever this horrid thing is and build a life together because if he runs the other way, you'll never see him again. Um, and so, you know, people ask me a lot about, all the different scenes in the show and like what the emotional strain took or even the physical strain and and this one always stands out as one of the ones that really was the most um you know one of the more fulfilling days of work because of how um interesting and intense the scene was but you know it's it it was a draining day because it was uh so easy to get lost in that scene i i just got every time we did it it was just it would sweep me away and I would feel so emotional and so like, it, like just, I really felt like I was pleading with someone to stay with me. And it was, but as I always, I do say like as actors who are portraying um, a real story like this, who are portraying people who survived the Holocaust, the least we can do is feel drained at the end of the day of filming an intense scene because we have the privilege of portraying it and not actually having to live through this. So it was it was a fulfilling feeling to be able to hopefully do Helena and Adam's story justice. Yeah, um, I think it's really interesting too through that scene where you see cognitive dissonance. It's like, how do human beings handle a war and an upcoming war and what choices are gonna be made outside of their control and then you're you're talking about your family and how your family's money has been able to help all these other people. And that makes some kind of logical sense. But is there any kind of logic in wars like this? Like, you're so out of control. What what becomes of you in this whole, I, I can't say adventure because it's a nightmare that you have to go on and your whole family gets split apart through the process of this. And I know that it's based on a real story and you worked with the, the writer of the book. Um, how was, what was your research pro process? Um, so we were lucky enough uh, to have, um, we had a researcher who was a part of our team and he gave us, at the beginning of, uh, 
prepping for the show, he gave us a 300 page research packet, um, which was, so, it, it spanned across from like so many things, the history of Poland and Ukraine and how everything got separated and, and, and also like the history of various different aspects of the Holocaust, various different aspects of what this actual kind of family might have lived through, um, not just because our, our, our story doesn't portray a family in the camps, you know, which is a very interesting and different kind of portrayal uh, on screen of the Holocaust and Jewish people in the Holocaust. Um, but we also had Georgia, the author of the book, whose real family went through this, and she was just amazing to have as a resource. It was just incredible. Um, and so at the beginning of the show, before we started filming, but in the prep process, I obviously was, I devoured that research packet, which was so interesting and so helpful. And then I went to Georgia and asked her so many questions about Helena, because she never knew Helena, but her cousins knew Helena. Her cousins were Helena's grandchildren. And she, and, and I, and I got to meet Helena's kids. I got to meet her two children, which was, her and Adam's two children, which was just so amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, it was the accent work, uh, which was also really interesting. Um, and then, you know, there's like various things you kind of put your body through too, which is like, I always feel like a little pretentious when I talk about this. Like I barely mention it when I'm doing press, but like I did, you know, think about how much like obviously mental turmoil they're going through and also physical turmoil they're going through. Uh, they're all of a sudden going from a, a well-off family who have beautiful meals together to like absolutely like rations and starving, and so there was a, a like a journey with that. And well, there's scarcity in war, right? There's scarcity, there's, absolutely. There's scarcity in that everything that you're used to, your shops and your grocery store, the way you lived your life you know, that you were an equal yeah. part of society and a citizen and even a privileged rich family, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden this happened. So I know you made certain choices acting, yeah. you know, of what you, how you wanted to change your physicality. The physicality was so important. And so that was like a big thing on, on my body. I'd never done that before. Lose weight. Yeah. Four yeah. Four apart. Four apart. And, um, that was like, that was really an interesting experience. And then, you know, while doing this, while doing that, I was also trying to throughout the show, which was a seven month long shoot, consume as much of like different perspectives from the Holocaust that are true counts as possible. So I was reading different, various different books, whether it be like there was a book I read that was a, a doctor who was a Jewish doctor who was assigned like to be, um, in the morgue in Auschwitz and like it was just I, I was kind of consuming all this it was it was very it was like you know I was so happy to be able to do that but that is a it's a crazy place to live in your head for like seven months yeah it's like bearing witness to all of these things and it is a very different kind of portrayal of one of the many 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 stories of how people survived or didn't survive during the Holocaust, but often we see things that are more centered around the, unfortunately, the death camps, and it's unbearable that there were such things. And what's so interesting is our, our Jewish family in this show, as seen, if you have seen the series, I believe in episode six or seven, is when they start to hear the rumors that those death camps exist. So it wasn't common knowledge for, you know, my character, it's funny to call her a character, the person I'm portraying, Helena, she was passing as Aryan. She had naturally lighter hair and naturally lighter eyes. That's why we decided to dye my hair a bit lighter. And like, so she was Aryan passing. So she was able to kind of move through the world and pretend that she was among people that she was supposed to feel comfortable with. Um, and then in secret, they're finding out all these horrible things while also trying to, you know, sneak fake IDs for the family. Like there's just, there was a keep moving forward, keep, keep going for survival. And then every now and then they got glimpses of like what's going on outside of their family. And, and that moment when she's like, I, I heard rumors that there's like death camps and they're burning us. And it just like, it, you realize you know, when shooting this show, one of the things that was like really important for me to remember, and with any, with I mean, as all of us in this room know, every everything that's ever shot ever is shot out of order. But like with this particular show, you know, you're portraying a real life war, a real life family story. It's so important to remember that like 
they don't know they're going to survive this. Mm -hmm. When Helena's pleading with Adam that she wants to have a life with him and have children with him, that is pure hope and survival, but she has no idea if they're going to make it out of that bunker. Like this keeping that mindset of like, they don't know that they're going to survive this. And like keeping that feeling of like desperation and trudging forward and just like, you know, it, focusing was really interesting. It's interesting too, because this scene takes place before she kind of becomes an agent of her own, you know, kind of takes on her own strength and starts kind of facilitating things a lot her her own self like and it's also this scene takes place before she you know i think that there's a point where helena is taking on this role of of helping the family so much not that she thinks she's invincible but i think she does think that she's able to have control over a lot of things so this scene takes place before the finale and in the finale you know it's not really a spoiler because lucky ones but um <laughs> she, she um she does get arrested by the germans and has a really horrible uh four months in prison and so um you know it's just her her journey is so interesting yeah and also there's a there's a serious a point where she's going through the woods and you know through these checkpoints even though there's and she's the one also that's sort of like we have to get out she realizes before the family does, and then the family ends up, I'm giving everything away. <laughs> anyway, there's a very poignant moment also where the mom, where the mom and dad have to leave their apartment. Yeah, it's when the, it's, it's that horrible part of the beginning of World War II, which was true, is that like, it just, like all of a sudden, within like minutes, Jews started being evicted from their homes just with and and we're given 30 minutes notice to leave and it's yeah that that scene always breaks my heart too yeah it's a very powerful scene where she's looking at her house and you can only take so much with you and then the house that they end up getting because the father has connections walking into someone else's apartment that was taken from them and not knowing like you don't want to be profiting or doing well off of somebody else who had to go through this thing too. So there's just so many layers of emotion in so many of these scenes. And to see this family, even though they are the lucky ones, to be split apart in this kind of a way, you know, a very close family to be splintered like that. And also a lot of people have said to me, like, it's so, it, the title is so interesting to say like lucky, because when you watch the show, over this span of, you know, we're telling a story over several years and eight episodes. Um, like what these people went through, of course, was anything but lucky. It was mm -hmm. so painful, so, so much suffering. But because of the nature of how many just perish and did not survive and how heartbreaking and horrible that is, and the, the vast number of people that did not make it, they survived and it was horrible and they went through the most traumatizing of experiences but they were so lucky to have survived and to have found each other it, it is is truly like it's shocking when you watch a story like this and you're like yes it's miraculous yes they're lucky but wow how much devastation you know well also the the there's been a lot of critical acclaim for this also for the set dressing the period the clothing i know as an actor sometimes that's really powerful to connect to different pieces and things and put on certain clothes and all of that. And how is that for you to be really in this kind of world that they create? The team around set dressing, hair and makeup, wardrobe, every every aspect of like, you know, picture car people, like the there was just so much that went into making the show look as realistic as possible. And everyone was working at such a high level. It was so impressive. Like I'm just so lucky to have been working with those people because you know there's all this research you do beforehand there's all these things you do to prep for your character there's all this preparation but i must say when you put on that outfit that is from the 1940s and you put on the undergarments that are from the 1940s our, our wardrobe team was so fantastic they did not stop at the dresses and say where this bra from amazon like they really <laughs> sourced <laughs> everything which is just so immersive i'm wearing stockings from this period of time and and our makeup team and our hair team, like 
that you you throw all that together you 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 try on your accent with your new look and 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 you feel like wow i have i have stepped into something now and i it, it just it is such a confidence boost to work with such amazing directors and heads of departments because you know you just feel like we're all creating something together it's such a such a collaborative amazing feeling to work with such talented people and Sam Wolf was the um, actor yes, who he plays played Adam. Adam. Yes. Yeah, he did a really beautiful he's job. A, he is fantastic. He's so fantastic. He's just such a great actor, such a generous person. Honestly, I, I feel like when you work on like a big ensemble like this, there's a lot of room for some crazies to be uh, implemented in the cast. But everyone was really fantastic. Like I was like, wait, there's got to be someone who's nuts. But everyone was so wonderful and so talented. Also, I, I don't, I can't find my own notes. Here. There's too many notes. Too much highlighter. What I was, was going to say the highlighter was highlighted everything. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, what's, what's no, it focusing no, on? Nothing left but a highlighter. <laughs> what's the highlighter supposed to be focusing on when everything is highlighted? Okay, look, look. You have a, a diverse, incredible career from act bullet train um so many different things and i know that you've worked before with logan right on bullet train yeah yeah and he played your brother again yeah, yeah brother so again. what's going on we want yeah. the dirt we super, want to know what's happening super funny the funny thing is in bullet train i play he plays my brother who i despise and i like can't wait to kill him and i spit in his face and i'm the one who actually like like helps kill him um and then <laughs> in this series we couldn't love each other more it's so funny <laughs> so were you thinking about this project because you're one of the producers on this no i'm not not on this one. Oh, you're not no did you highlight that <laughs> <laughs> how could it be wrong <laughs> very strange okay anyway. well you should have been my darling in any event okay so did you did you, were you guys talking about this project was okay. this even in the world? No, so so Tommy Kill, who's the um, director of the pilot and the director of the finale and just a producer on the show as well, he approached me before the show and we were gonna do a Fiddler on the Roof movie together. Uh, like a, wow. I know. And then the studio was like, yeah, no one wants to see that. And so they what scrapped do you mean? it. I wouldn't have to work hard. <laughs> So, and yeah, it's an all female cast. Woo! I was, about to say, I was about to say that would have been my role. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but the studio scrapped it because they were like, nah, never mind. And we were like, wait, what? That would have been so fun. Um, but Tommy then was like, well, there's actually something else that I, that's interesting. You know, him and Georgia had been friends forever, who's the author of the book. And um, she, you know, they tried to get this this made before, and everyone said no to them. Him, uh, Georgia, and Erica are showrunner. And his grandfather survived the Holocaust, right? Um, didn't he end up? Um, I think he went to Asia. I, I think that was um, Logan's, Logan's Logan's that was Logan's grandfather's story. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Logan, yeah, I, I thought you meant Tommy. I think meant Tommy. Oh no, yeah, Logan's Logan. grandfather mm -hmm. yeah. immigrated from. Germany. Mm -hmm. He was a Jewish uh, German. Yeah, to Asia. And he, to yeah, Singapore? I think it was to China. Yeah, it was, I think it was in Singapore. Um, very interesting story. But so then everyone said no to Tommy, Georgia, and Erica. And then, but they are so fantastic. They knew that it wasn't like, they were like, okay, great. Like, we have an amazing project here. It's just not the right time. So they held on to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so Tommy was like, what would you think about doing this? I was immediately like so interested. Um, I read the book before I even read the script, and then I said yes. And then they took it to Hulu, saying, "You know, Joe really wants to do it." And then Hulu was like, "Okay." And then uh, then we started making the show. And he's like, "What do you know?" He's like, "Do you know Logan Lerman? I think he'd be amazing for the part of Addie." I was like, "I love Logan. He's one of my best friends. Like, this is gonna be fantastic." And then everything was just like. If everything was like just fell into place. It was amazing. 
And then, but although we were told we were going to be shooting in London, and they pulled a 180 on us, and we're like, like literally maybe a month before filming, they're like, by the way, it's actually going to be in Romania now. Oh, no. And we were like, well, that's a big difference. Um, that's interesting, but you know, say la vie. Well, the sets look beautiful, and they, the, you look, know. Also, I do think like. It couldn't have been shot anywhere else. It was perfect. And the Romanian crews are incredible. They're amazing. Yeah. Um, so what have the fan reactions been? I'm reading from the highlight questions here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, what have the fan reactions been since the show's premiered? Um, I think good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't I know. I like, I hope it's been nice. You know what? It's funny because I think when we like, and I feel like you probably know this, feel this too, and probably everyone in this room kind of maybe feels this in a way, like, sometimes, like, your peers who, like, are also, like, busy and working and stuff, like, they don't necessarily, like, message you about your stuff because they're watching it and they're super proud of you, but they're like, yeah, but, like, I'm sure they're getting a, you know, I've had so many people in the past text me be like, oh, I was going to text you about this, but I'm sure you were getting, like, a hundred texts, and I was like, I wasn't, actually. Uh, I was waiting for you. I was text. waiting. For, so it's funny, like, the show premiered, and without fail, every every time an episode came out, the first person to text me would be my grandmother. Aww. I know. And my cousin Cindy, because they watched the show together. Um, and then, like, I got a text, like, every now and then from a friend being like, I know your messages must be inundated, but I just want to say, I'm like... Actually, Noah, you're the first one in a you while. You're grandma. Proof of life. But it's really sweet because, like, everyone, I, I do the same thing when a friend of mine has, like, a big accomplishment. I'm like, oh, I don't want to bother them. Like, I don't know why. Like, I don't know why I think like that. And because whenever it happens to me, I'm like, oh, well, I, think I, I really appreciate it when someone reaches out. But the fan reaction, I mean, it's really, it's actually really special because in my Instagram comments, which I try not to read because it's very, you know, stressful, but for this show, I, I had like posted a couple things about it, then I posted something about the finale recently, and you know, I was reading these comments, and it is amazing. People aren't just being like, yeah, I love it, woo, it's amazing. They're sharing such personal, beautiful stories in these comments about their own family survival, or even if they're not Jewish at all, how this story affected them. Like, I have to say that the fans of the show who have watched it, they're displaying such kindness, but also such passion for the show, which has been like, you know, we put so much passion into making it. I, I, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of everyone who made it. So hearing the people who have watched it and really just, it resonates, it's so special. And, and when people who do know me reach out, it's a similar thing. Like they're just, there's a passion for this show. And that is, I mean, that's invaluable. It's so special. I mean, it's so sad that since the dawn of man, we've been creating war and Families have been torn apart by war and the impact of war. And growing up in America, you know, after Vietnam, when I was little, there were still young people coming back from Vietnam or had fought in Vietnam. But since then, I mean, there's been Desert Storm and a few things, but in general, we here haven't had war on our we're so on our land. Yeah, and this this is still happening we're still having wars and it, the impact and on families, families are being torn apart and, yeah. and children are affected it's horrible it's horrible mm -hmm. yeah it is did you i don't know did you ever go to any auschwitz or any death camps have you ever done that in your life i i haven't yet i've always been kind of scared to go honestly like I, I've never been to Auschwitz, but it's before this show ever was even a thought in anyone's mind. I was I was in Berlin when I was 19 visiting my friend in college. I was sleeping in her dorm with her and we were just like having a great time. But I knew that there was a, a camp nearby uh, that was about like a two hour train ride away. I, I, I'm probably botching the name of it, but I believe it's called Sauschhausen. Mm. Um, it was a concentration camp and I went and visited that camp. Um, and that was a very, um, it's hard to articulate in like a way that sounds like intelligent or even that I can like convey or contextualize what it felt like. But the only thing I can say is like, I walked in there, you know, very pragmatic about it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fine. 
Um, it's very educational. And I was there for a few hours and then like, I don't know, like some a, a, a switch flipped, a faucet turned on and I just was like, you know, like sobbing, like quietly in the corner so I wouldn't be like a weirdo drawing attention to myself. But I was just like sobbing and I like had to leave and had to get out of there. Like I, and I, I'm a pretty like, I'm like not, a, I, I'm like not a very overly emotional person. Not that that's a, like an overly emotional <laughs> place to have a, an experience, but I wasn't expecting it is what I'm trying to say. I was like really trying to be like, okay, this is a museum and I'm here to see this and take it in. And, but it's just, there's like a horrible energy places like that. And it was really, I, it made me really appreciate how brave it is to actually go visit a place like Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, and I think not to like over grandize actors or what we do yeah. or any of that, but I think when your heart's in the right place and you care about the material and you want to honor the material, you know, you have to open your heart in a way to this collective experience that is like one of the awful things of humanity you know that man does to man and i think uh the f that's why historical things i think are very intense and yeah. you've played i mean i know in the act you played gypsy rose and you know now she's out of jail but <laughs> this is also based on a real person and yeah. um does it feel different when you're acting like a somebody who actually you know existed yeah. yeah it 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 does and that's kind of what i mean what you just said like is the perfect description of like what i mean when i say like the least we can do as actors is like feel overwhelmed by the emotion that we are given in a scene that's the least we can do when playing someone who went through something so horrible it's a real person helena helena quartz is a real human being who lived through this and i met her children i hugged her children i like it is such a it's a different kind of responsibility it's, it's also different than when i did the act with you you know like gypsy is a person who is alive and people can see her and hear her and experience her in the world and there's a responsibility to that in a in a different way because it's like oh some people can draw a direct comparison to like what I did versus what she you know it's like that's a very interesting thing. This is so different because Helena's not alive anymore, but her story is so you know hopeful and devastating, heartbreaking and and so you know you know there's just so much joy in it as well in certain parts. I just felt a real not pressure, but like undertaking to do this justice to make her family proud. Um, you know, I think we all felt that way. Every single one of us in the cast was like, we just want to do this beautiful family proud. Um, and we, yeah, we like, we were, we were so, so passionate and so there and so present. And, you know, it is interesting too, like, this particular show, we were all so, we all had different moments where we would kind of have these like emotional breakdowns, so to say, like, and it was random. It didn't matter what the scene was. Sometimes it would just kind of hit in this way. We're like so affected by something. And to be honest, me, like having an emotional scene, like doing a scene that's emotional, that is, I can do that all day long. It does not make me feel embarrassed or weird. Like, I, I feel so present and wonderful doing those kinds of things. But when the camera's cut and I'm in real life, expressing that kind of emotion and crying in front of people, it, it, there's a certain shame that comes with that for me for some reason. I don't want to be like, you know, I, I laugh it off if I have a moment or I brush it off. But this particular show, we were all so like, so supportive of each other, lifting each other up that none of us felt that shame when we had these moments of deep affectedness that were like would just take on and take mm -hmm. over and we would cry and we would just really hold each other and and be there and there was no shame there was no post cry shame like it was it was really special because um this the show was really overwhelming to make and it was really sad and heartbreaking at times and um you know that was the 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 support that we had from not just the entire cast but all of our directors, all of our crew, it was so special.
And you, you had a scene also where you were taken in by the Russian army. And I think it's strange too when you're like surrounded by uniforms. It has a whole different thing. Yeah. I mean, there, I think into the whole collective consciousness, like the Nazi uniform is like so burnt into our imagination of what that means, you know, to all of us. And again, going back to the costume department and, you know, people that have to work on in these things, they really do do this kind of research to the unteenth level and the, you know, the ration booklets or the different things that they make, you know? I mean, it has to be so, I mean, Lisa Duncan was our incredible costume designer. And I, I do think about that with what you're saying, like, there's, it's such an art form, like every single sector of, um, every head of department, every single crew member, everyone that had a, a job to do to make this show happen. There's so much emotion in that. Like, obviously, you know, the director is like captain of the ship and is like taking on all the emotion from every aspect of that to overseeing all of it. It's just, it's an incredible role to like drive a, 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 a series like this forward. And then also thinking about what you're saying with the costume designer, like the feeling of like sitting there and, and probably just like making Nazi uniform after Nazi uniform, holding in your hand, sewing it together, like that's a deeply emotional experience, I'm sure. It's even a very intense thing, I think, for extras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all these people to put that on. We had some of the most talented background actors I've ever worked with. They were so sensitive and kind, but also just like, they. I just, I was so amazed because, you know, it's a delicate show and to have background actors be so, you know, they're stepping in to a scene they don't really have the context for, they didn't have the context for yesterday's scenes, they don't have the context for tomorrow's scenes, but they're so deeply sensitive and, and kind and talented, and I was just like so excited by that. Wow. Well, yeah. Are you getting the wrap it up? Wait. I can't see anything, so I don't know. Am I oh, wrapping it up? <laughs> I, yes, I yes, she said yes. Uh, one more question? I oh, okay. Think? I don't know, I can't see. What's your favorite color? Oh, my glasses are gone. It's all gone. But I think she said one more question or something. She's if, like, no, I just If you were me, Joey King, what if would you would ask you? Oh my god, what a, what a crazy question. <laughs> right? Get in my head, Joey King, and tell me what you would want to tell me. Um, oh. What do I want to tell, oh, no, tell no, you? Just, I want to I want to just just to have a love explosion for you right now. Aww. I love you so much. I love you, I'm Jordan. so honored that you came here and did this. And this is one of my favorite theaters to come to. My husband's a director and so we we come to the DGA to see the screenings all the time and it's just such an amazing community. Um, are you still officially a newlywed? I don't know. It's, I've been married for 9 months now. You're so. still Woo! Congratulations. Yeah. I'm still a newlywed. I'm still a newlywed. But I have silver jewelry on today, so I left my wedding ring at home because it didn't go with my outfit. So, but I'm still married. Um, but I just, I, I just so appreciate everybody who's here. I know you're here for a lot of different shows, but thank you so much. Um, and you are the just the best. I, I don't even know what to say. You just, when, when I heard you said yes to this, I was like, oh, I was so touched. I just, mm -hmm. I loved working with you more than anything. I look up to you more than anything. You are like just my queen. I love you so much. Aww. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. As a person, I love it. And check out my show, Hi Desert. <laughs> <laughs> Our shows. We're the lucky ones in high desert. That's right. <laughs> We're still working, Mose. Hire us, please. Thank you. Anytime. Yes, we love right. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Please stay here.